when President Ulysses S. Grant spoke to Congress in December of 1876 about the scandals that had plagued his administration for two terms, he famously said the words, mistakes were made, but not by me. In 1973, in the midst of the Watergate scandal, Richard Nixon said on multiple occasions, mistakes were made, but not by me. And in 2002, when Henry Kissinger was pressed about what went wrong exactly with the war in Vietnam, he said mistakes were made, but not by me. Sidestepping the fact that he was the Secretary of State during the time at which those mistakes were made. Mistakes were made is one of the best known and infamous phrases in the history of American politics. The great political speechwriter and commentator William Sapphire called the expression, mistakes were made, a passive evasive way of acknowledging error while distancing the speaker from responsibility for the error. Mistakes were made is the king of non-apologies. It's an expression that signifies the ultimate refusal to accept personal responsibility. And while neither Adam nor Eve actually utters the words mistakes were made in this week's Torah portion, they might as well have. As we all know, Adam and Eve sin in the Garden of Eden. God commands them to do one thing and one thing only, not to eat from the tree of knowledge. And of course they do the one thing that they are told not to do. They eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge. And when God confronts Adam and asks him, did you eat from the one tree that I asked you not to eat from? Adam says, well, yeah, but it wasn't my fault. Eve told me to do it. She's the one who gave me the fruit. So God asks Eve, did you give Adam fruit from the one tree I asked you not to eat from? And Eve says, yeah, I did, but it wasn't my fault. The serpent deceived me. He's really the one to blame. Both Adam and Eve insist that the sin was not their fault. Adam blames Eve, and Eve blames the serpent. In other words, mistakes were made, but not by me. And that, I think, is the real sin of the Garden of Eden. Not the transgression itself, but rather the denial of responsibility for the transgression. Had Adam and Eve simply accepted responsibility and owned up to their actions, God might have reacted very differently. But they didn't do that. And because they did not accept personal responsibility, they were exiled from the garden, and paradise was lost. The difficult truth is most of us are just like Adam and Eve. We have a very, very hard time admitting when we're wrong, either out of a sense of shame or because it seems like a sign of weakness or simply because it's just hard to admit when you've made a mistake. But how much easier would life be if we could just accept when we make a mistake? How much happier would our marriages be if we could simply accept when we make a mistake? But most of us can't do that. We say things like, why should I always be the one to take out the trash or to worry about the gas bill? Or, I loaded the dishwasher last night and you do it tonight. Wouldn't life be so much better if we could simply say to our spouse, you're right, I didn't take out the trash. I forgot to pay the gas bill. I didn't load the dishwasher. I'm sorry. But that is so, so difficult for most of us to do. In her book called Mistakes Were Made, the social psychologist Carol Tarvis writes about the fact that even when presented with hard empirical evidence about the fact, proving that, that we made a mistake, most people still find it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to admit that they were wrong. We double down, we defend ourselves, we justify our actions by saying things like, well, given the circumstances at the time, it was the best I could have done. Or we defend ourselves by blaming someone else, just as Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. We say things like, we were given faulty information, so we did the best we could based on what we were told. Mistakes were made, but not by us. And in some extreme cases, people have such difficulty admitting that they were wrong that they can actually block out the offending incident from their minds entirely. In his book, The Psychopathology of Everyday Life, Sigmund Freud recounts an incident in which he came upon the name of a patient in his notes 
that he could not recall at all, even though he had seen her nearly every day for weeks, just six months earlier. And he tried for a long time to bring this patient to mind, but for the life of him, he couldn't remember what she looked like. He couldn't remember what they had discussed during their sessions. He could not remember anything about her. But when he reconstructed the case from his notes, he was astonished by the incredible power of his selective memory because the patient in question was a young girl whose parents had brought her to him because she complained incessantly of stomach pains and Freud had diagnosed her with hysteria. And just a few months later, that girl died of abdominal cancer. And Freud couldn't come to terms with the fact that he had made such a colossal mistake. He couldn't admit or own up to his tragic error. So he simply blocked the incident out of his mind entirely, as if it never happened. That's how difficult it is for people to admit when they make a mistake. But as we were reminded of just a few weeks ago on Yom Kippur, owning up to our mistakes is a key foundational pillar of the Jewish tradition. In the section of his great law code that deals with the laws of repentance, Maimonides teaches that before we can achieve repentance or atonement, we need to actually admit that we have transgressed. We need to verbalize what we've done wrong because we can't be forgiven until we acknowledge our wrongdoing. And that does not mean rationalizing it or blaming it on someone else or trying to minimize the transgression. It means owning it. It means actually saying, I screwed up. I made a mistake. I did something wrong, which is precisely what Adam and Eve did not do in the Garden of Eden. They both transferred the blame to someone else. But that's not a recipe for success in life. As Leo Tolstoy once wrote, if you make it a habit not to blame others, you will feel the growth of the ability to love in your soul, and you will see the growth of goodness in your life. Before Adam and Eve both evaded responsibility, God asked Adam the question, Ayeka, where are you? And according to the great 18th century Hasidic master Rabbi Shnur Zalman of Liadi, also known as the Altar Rebbe, that question isn't only asked of Adam, it's asked of each and every one of us every single day. God perpetually asks us, Ayeka, where are you? And it's up to us to say, we're here, God. We're here, and we are human. We err, we make mistakes, we transgress, and that's okay, because that's what it means to be human. Mistakes are made, and they are made by us. Shabbat shalom. We continue on page